Good evening, fiends. Are you ready? Let's get spooky. Let's get spooky. I'm Vamp. And I'm AJ. And today we are going to be talking about all the things that we couldn't talk mm-hmm. about because of the strike. We're all the things playing we catch did. up. We have a lot. I mean, how many months was that? Uh, July, 180 August, something. September, October, November. Almost four? Around four months? Yeah. Maybe? Give or take a little bit? Everyone's like one, two, three. Around. The, it, 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 July. He said April. No, it was July. That was the writer's in the Yes, July. It's been a long amount of time where um, we were supporting the strike, so there we, we weren't going to premieres mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So um, there was a lot of catch-up to do, and I think for me there was a lot of things that I was supposed to go to and then um, ended up not going to, mm-hmm. and then it all kind of compiled. And then I was looking at lists, and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't see that. Yeah. I didn't see that. Um, so we're going to talk about... Uh, movies and shows that were going on during that time. And we're also going to talk about, we're going to first start off talking about all of the haunts and stuff yeah, we did. Yeah, because it was just spooky season. Yeah. Which is our busiest time because that's what we love and live. And when it's during October, it's our normal stuff times 10. Right. But it also- even busier. It was in, it starts at the end of August now. Yeah. It, it really, Halloween for like events and um, haunts and stuff is- End of August, first week of September, all mm-hmm. the way through even November. Because some yeah. of the things carried over where they didn't even end after Halloween. They are mm-hmm. like, not enough people got to come. We're going to stay open for two more weeks. Yeah, because we're doing, delu- I'm doing Delusion. Are finally. you doing it this weekend? Yeah, I'm doing it tomorrow. Which so. is the last, oh, this is going to come out. This after. is going to come out after. I've already, by the time you watch this, I probably have already done it. But Oh, I'm so excited for you. I'm very excited. So excited. Okay, so we started off, I guess we can go in the order <laughs> Our special guest, Spooky the Kitten, is still here. It's still so here, sorry. Random sounds in the background. That's or you him. see me laugh out of nowhere. Yeah. It's because he's doing something dumb. He's like climbing on a, I don't know what's happening. Tame the Beast. Um, so we started off, we'll go in the order of things. We started mm-hmm. off um, Universal Orlando. Yep. was our first. It's the first week in, uh, first, wow, words. It's the first week of September. September. Yeah. Um, for their media opening night which I forget the date, but it was around that time. Yeah. And so we flew out to Orlando. We did that. They really roll out the red carpet mm-hmm. for their event. Um, we start at the hotel. There's shuttle buses that pick us up. Unfortunately, this year, we flew in the same day, and we're like, okay, cool, everything's perfect, it's fine. Yeah. We get to the hotel, check in, drop our bags off, and we're like, what is that sound? Just sheets of water hitting our it's, window. It was insane. A like, downpour downpour we had we got the the laundry bags from the closet and made like hat covering so that we could get to (laughs) to the buses and we actually rocked those for quite a bit of time yeah because it was it was wet it rained for a little bit and i think it was because we looked at normally like especially for florida like i always have my poncho with me because florida being Mm -hmm. florida it'll just start raining yeah and i don't know where it's like a sprinkle it's it's like a torrential downpour it's all of a sudden like just Buckets of water is falling from the sky, but I was being selfish and I only wanted to bring my like teeny tiny little fanny pack. So I'm like, I don't want to carry my, Mm -hmm. my poncho with me. So we just brought the plastic bags over it because we looked at the weather and it said it was going to stop soon. So we're like, let's hope so. It's just a temporary fix and we didn't want to carry umbrellas. It's like, it's the, the function versus fashion kind of thing. Yeah. You're like, do I really want to have to carry all this crap around the whole night? Mm-hmm. No. no. Um, so we the, the, the laundry bags helped. Uh, it rained for a little bit by the time we got to uh, the event. So they shuttle you over to, it's sometimes in a different spot, but this time yeah. it was like in a big kind of warehouse looking One room. One of their stages. And they, they have all the foods on display, all the foods and drinks that are specialty for the event, mm-hmm. um, plus the announcement, which is, kind of like a it's not really like a visual it's uh like a preview of what's to come so the names of the mazes kind of what they're about Mm -hmm. um there's a little bit of a show element um and then again we got to munch on some stuff drink some stuff yeah um and then we are uh uh put into our groups Mm -hmm. and we do 
the RIP tour. So we yeah. have a guided tour, which is so fantastic. A huge thank you to Universal because it is such a treat to yeah. be able to experience it that way. And I would recommend if you're able to spring for the RIP tour, it's a little bit of a splurge, but if you're able to do it, it is such a great way to experience Horror Nights mm -hmm. on both parks. Um, you you get to see everything. It's guaranteed you're not going to miss anything. Yeah. Um, and there's, like, a lot of little special added treats in there. You do get, like, um, if you do the regular IRP tour, there is, like, a food kind mm -hmm. of buffet thing. Buffet. Or drinks and snacks. Um, and it's just, it's just so much fun to do it that way. It's fun. And it's also nice because, like, the guide will tell you – like about the making of the the maze, like little Easter eggs that are within the maze or just cool more history. story and history to each of the mazes. So yeah. it adds, it makes them a little bit more fun because as you're walking through, like you're obviously seeing things and you're taking in the story and stuff, but having those extra little bits of knowledge when it comes to like each one is really cool. It's just, I mean, it's, it's essentially just like a really spooky fun guided tour um and obviously i mean the main perk is you wait in no lines you yeah. just go straight to the front um and you can do the it's um express right you express, can do the express yeah. pass which is helpful but i feel like um horror nights has gotten so popular that even the express, even the express is now starting to get and i hate being the person says like meh i have to wait in a line even though i have express I know. but it is true like because we did go the second night and we had the express pass and there was we were kind of getting worried that we might not do all the mazes because we were like we barely made it we barely made it we had to barely hustle made it. Yeah. to do the shows and the mazes and um the express line got a little bit hectic at some point for, sometimes for some we were the, in the, the express and it seemed like the normal line was going a little bit quicker than us and we're like we have to make it yeah we gotta do everything them. so and I would recommend if you're able to go multiple, if you can't do like an RIP tour, but you can do regular and go a, a couple of times or mm -hmm. get like the season pass. Yeah, they have those season passes. So that's you can the way go. to experience it yeah. because it's Take a your lot. time. It's a lot to do in one night. Um, so Horror Nights Orlando was amazing. I have, um, where do I have? I have my top, I think I have a couple top mazes. I would say for Orlando, um, they had really cool scare zones. Vamp 69 was my favorite scare zone. That one was just fun to walk through because so fun. they would actually like interact with you. So you can actually like go through and like talk to people. And there's a few times that we talked to people and they would be in character. Yeah. Like the... And it was a giant scare. It went yeah. on for a really long time. It was cool props. The costumes are amazing. And obviously vamps. We, we're partial to them. Um, top mazes for me. I loved Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Mm -hmm. Dr. Oddfellows, Twisted Origins, Exorcist Believer, and Stranger Things. Normally Stranger Things, yeah. I'm like, it's just the hype. Mm -hmm. But this year the maze was really, Especially really good. Especially in Orlando. The Orlando yeah. one was great. There's the, the one room when you're in Eddie's uh, trailer. And it's the scene where they, they have the... The hole in the ceiling to the other, you know, whatever they call upside it. Upside down. Or not, the well, they're in the upside down, yeah. right, to the regular. But, so you're walking through and you look up and it's the same exact room that you're in, but, you know, upside down and it has uh, dust in there and the rope trick that they had going it. all the way through. Yeah, because, like, normally when you walk through a maze, you're looking like this. You don't really look up. Yeah. But I, I noticed it and it was a really cool effect and I... It was one of my favorites for sure. It was great. And I think for me going, the first night was media night. So we were filming. We had our cameras mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, in Orlando, they have different rules than they do in LA. So you actually can't film in any of the mazes in Orlando um, at any time unless you're there for media night. Um, so then we did the second night, which was an extra treat because we got to experience it without having to work. And I actually like, got to see it with my eyes. Right, and not having to see it through the screen. Then after um, mm -hmm. Orlando, we basically did that whirlwind of a trip, came back, and then it was like a couple days, right? And then it was mm -hmm. L.A. Yep, then we got to Horror do Nights in Horror Hollywood. Nights in Hollywood, which is always fun. I love that we do that. I hope that it, it, it's a continued tradition for us because it's it is favorite. really cool being able to see both and compare. And, and just, certain things that will, will surprise you because – Typically, my my general consensus every year is Orlando is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, everything there, Orlando's bigger. They have a lot more non-franchise mazes. They have yeah. a lot of like original IP mazes, which are always really great. Um, but this year, Horror Nights in Hollywood, um, they both had the Universal Monsters Unmasked maze. Mm -hmm. 
And I actually liked Hollywood's better I did than too. I liked Orlando's. Yeah. And they're both great, but they're just different. The way they tell the story is different. Mm-hmm. Um, so Horror Nights in Orlando, we uh, did Media Night. We walked the carpet. Um, we didn't have an RIP tour there. We just had Express. Um, but I would say the lines weren't quite as crazy as they were in Orlando. It was yeah, still busy, it was but still it wasn't busy, as bad. but not as insane and i loved holidays in hell maze that one Um, was so good they used to have the holiday you remember the holiday scare zone i don't think i I think no i do remember yeah was one of my favorite scare zone because it was essentially the holidays in hell maze but Mm -hmm. in a scare zone um so they basically turned that all into a maze one of my top ones um where am i i'm jumping around uh i also loved unmasked and then the terror tram it was like a bug exterminator this year, which wasn't my favorite, but I just love the Terra Tram in general. I love riding on the tram, going to the back lot, um, being able to walk around, and it's just fun for me. And I love this year, well, they did it last year too, but I feel like, because last year they, they obviously have um, the Nope area, the mm-hmm. Jordan Peele oh, yeah. area. Yeah. But I feel like before it was all nope themed, but I feel like this time they basically made it like a Jordan Peele Mm -hmm. area of madness where they They had had stuff from us. Yeah, you're right. They had obviously nope stuff, but then they also had get out. They had people doing the teacup. Yeah. And it was really cool. I love that section. I did. You're right. I I like that they mixed it up because last year was, um, wasn't last year the first year that they had the nope area. Mm -hmm. So then this year they added some stuff. So you're not walking through the same basically section. Um, What was the name of that one? I'm trying to remember. In Hollywood or? Hollywood. Uh Uh-huh. The, it was in the area that the. La La Rona area. Oh, um, it was Monstros. Something of Latin America. Yeah, that one was great. I don't know what the exact title. That one actually was really good. That one was great, Visually too. beautiful. And I, that's another one where I love that they didn't just do an IP, that they came up with their own type of story yeah. and built a maze around it. I it love really the original good. IP because I feel like you don't have the restrictions of, like, it has to adhere to the storyline. Mm-hmm. You can just do whatever you want. Um, my One of my favorite ones of all time was, uh, it was in Orlando, this was years ago, and it was called The Hive, and it was a vampire one. Ooh, and it oh, was, yeah. It was just so cool. Um, and I I believe that was the first year I did Orlando. Um, so it was very new to me mm-hmm. that it was so different from L.A. Yeah. Um, really loved it. you have any other Horror Nights, or do you want to? I think we're good to move horror nights. on to. Next was Knott's, mm-hmm. Scary Farm. Um, every year, Knott's is my absolute favorite but Knott's holds a special place in my heart I have a lot of history with um Knott's Berry Farm and Knott's Scary Farm um I got to host their announcement event this year which was Mm -hmm. or co-host it which was really really fun basically giving everyone a sneak peek of what was to come for the season which was an iconic year because they were celebrating 50 50 years years, which is so crazy to think that 50 years ago they were like starting all right? this scariness in the park. And the way it kind of all started was a little bit of an accident. Um, there was uh, like scare actors like in the in the windows. Well, not really scare actors, but they were like people dressed up in the windows mm-hmm. and they um, were locked out. They got locked out of the like the window area that they were going to be in. So they were just kind of roaming the streets and it was scaring people. And so then it turned into a thing that is now what we know. It was very, I mean, obviously very different than what it is now. Um, but to think that something... That was kind of a little bit of an accident Mm -hmm. and has gone on for 50 years and gotten better and better and better and better and has created this like crazy uh, community. I wouldn't even say fan base community of people that we all love Halloween. We Mm -hmm. all love all of this stuff. And it has brought so many people together. And really, I mean, there's been haunts, you know, all throughout the states, but Knott's was the first to do it. I mean, 50 mm-hmm. years ago was a way different time than it is now. Yeah. And to see um, one thing that I picked up in the, in the um, what did they call the store? The Legacy Store. The Legacy Store uh, was the book that has all of the history and is really cool to flip through it and see how it has evolved over the years. Um, so Not Scary Farm introduced three new mazes this year, Room 13, uh, The Chilling Chambers, and Cinema Slasher. And yeah. Cinema Slasher and the Chilling Chambers were so my good. favorite. Oh my gosh. Room 13 was really cool too, but those other two were my tops yeah. for the whole season. Mm-hmm. Um, Chilling yeah. Chambers was like essentially just a bunch of, I mean, it was, it went on forever. I feel like that maze was like 15 minutes long. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was just kept going and going and it had all the like different Easter eggs from throughout the years of uh, Scary Farm Mazes, which was also really cool. Um, Cinema Slasher too was Cinema Slasher forever. It went on forever. And (laughs) sometimes that could be a bad thing, but it was like, we didn't want it to end. Yeah. It was was done so well. Oh, for knots, uh, shout out to our friend Glow, who is the bride. Mm, oh yeah, we love you, Glow. You're amazing. Oh um, if you don't know who I'm talking about, and you clearly know nothing about Not Scary Farm because she's plastered all over all mm-hmm. of the marketing. Um, and our second time, we went two times this season. Yeah, so we went for media night, and then we went again later in the season, and we actually got to take photos with mm-hmm. her and. Um, if you haven't seen our coverage, we have videos from Horror Nights. We also have videos from Knott's so you can yep. see actual mazes. Um, our cover photo for Scary Farm is us with Glow. Yeah. And if being the bride wasn't cool enough, she was also like one of the builders that did the Chilling Chambers mm, maze. Super and cool. The Not Scary Farm crew and team and uh, scare actors, I mean, it's a very small group. I mean, not small, but relatively small group yeah. of people. And they are all hands on deck. That's I mean, so cool. they are like working so hard to get those mazes up and running. And if you did that maze, you clearly know how much work was involved. Mm-hmm. Every inch of that maze was wild. Yeah. And you went from room to, I mean, the from chamber to chamber to chamber. Yep. And they were so decked out. Um, so a round of applause to everyone involved. And our friend John Cook that basically did the whole legacy store, which is mm. phenomenal. It was like I, a mini museum. It was fantastic yeah. like the the store itself was its own experience mm-hmm. i mean i've never been in a store to go buy something and then just want to hang out yeah. there was cool you just photo walk around ops. reading everything and like all of the built-ins that they like the architecture that they built into the store fantastic the the worst part about it is they had to take it down that's so <laughs> um, sad and i'm not sure actually i didn't go we were just at nazi the other day and we didn't go into um i think it's the emporium is where they transferred it into the mm. legacy store. I'm not sure if it's open right now, um, but I kind of wish that that store just stayed there just kept all year like round. Because it was very cool. So good. And it really set the bar. I'm like, I'm hoping every year the store, I mean, every mm. year they deck out, you know, the shop where you can get all of the uh, Scary Farm merchandise, but this year was top notch. Well, hello, friend. Um, okay, so the only other haunt related thing that I have on my list is um, Delusion. So I guess we could talk a little bit about it, and then after you do it, we can we throw can in update, a, a little yeah. bit of your um, your input. So delusion is essentially a very unique haunt experience. Um, imagine like a theater play, a spooky theater play that you get to take a part in, and you usually enter the. <laughs> He's getting restless. Um, you enter in groups of, I, I'm not sure what their max group is, but when we did it, I think our group was like 12, so like mm, 10 to 12 okay. people. Um, you can have smaller groups. Oh, I'm going to wrangle the beast real quick. Um, and every experience, no matter how t- how many times you do it, will be different mm-hmm. because you can be pulled away from the group. You can be asked to do a task. I can be asked to do a task. Um, and you're with a group of people, so if you're with different people, your experience is going to be different. Yeah. So each time you go through is unique. Um, I started going to Delusion many, many moons ago, and it has kind of fluctuated in the way the stories are and the location. So it's been very different every time. But this past year was at the Phillips Mansion in Pomona. Mm-hmm. I think it's been there previous years, but I believe it's their last year yeah, there I, now. I'm, they're moving to a new location. It's, a, it's a historical site, and they're like restoring it and, and all that stuff. So it's no longer going to be there. Um, mm-hmm. The place is supposedly haunted. We heard uh, some stories of the people that work there, things that happened. Um, but what I do have to say is it's such a unique experience and it's so different. Mm-hmm. We're so used to a haunted house. You walk through, things jump no out at you. No one touches you. No one touches you. No one interacts with you. Really, I mean, sometimes they scream in your face. Yeah. I found out at it. Uh, Don't go back there. Universal um, this year, but yeah. But this is, this is so next level and... I have to give it up to all of the the actors. I mean, they're theater actors. These people, they practice, and you would not know any different that you weren't walking onto like a full-on mm. stage play. You're crawling through things. You're hiding through things. They're telling you to run. I mean, it is it is so fun, and it's about uh, 45 minutes to like okay. an hour. It's long. Um, so it's a little bit pricier than, say, like, thank you. It's a little bit pricier than, say, uh, scary farm or um 
Because it's more personalized. For for yeah. what you get, because it's a shorter time. Um, but we did the, I think it was called the Behind the Veil. Oh. We're just, just going to leave it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we did the Behind the Veil VIP experience. Mm-hmm. So it was, which was really cool. So there's like a lounge. Um, there's food and drinks. And then the really cool thing is, uh, did you guys do the VIP or just do the regular? I think just the regular. If you can upgrade to the VIP, it's really cool. If they still have it. Um, There's a portion of it where you get to be, like, you get to dress up. You go through, like, a secret doorway, like, closet, uh and you get to be, like, part of the scare. Oh, okay. So being, buying a ticket, you're part of the theater. You're you're an actor in the play. You're going through the play with a group. But this was, like, you got to be on the other side of it. So you not only got to experience it, then you can go to the lounge, and then you could be on the other side of it. And it was such a cool experience. Um... I would say the best bang for your buck. It is, it only like an hour, hour and a half. I mean, you could stay there. If you get the VIP, you can stay much longer. You can mm. explore the house. Um, there was like performers, um, photo ops, super, super cool. So uh, Delusion had us out, invited us out for the media preview. Thank you so much. If, um, again, this is going to come out after, but yeah, next year, whatever you do, make sure you do Delusion. Yeah, I Everything I've heard about is really cool. I'm super excited. I think you're going to love it. One of my friends said, I think it was this one, that their friend did it. And she said by the end of the night, she was crying in one of the rooms while brushing a child's hair or something. And I'm like, wow, that sounds fun. (laughs) Years ago when we did it, um, it was a smaller group. There was only like six or seven of us. Mm -hmm. Um, And I got separated from the group. Like multiple people got separated and usually you get separated for a little bit and then the group finds you or you find the group and it's not a a long time. Mm -hmm. I got pulled away. I was tied to a chair. There was a bag over my head. There was multiple actors like running around me, whispering things into my ears. And I I was tied to that chair. I mean, it had to be like 10. I mean, it felt like an eternity. Maybe it wasn't even 10 minutes, but it was a long ass time where I was like, oh, do I just, is the rest of it just me tied to the, like, I'm not, there's no more, this is it, it. but it was, I mean, it was so much fun, a hundred percent would do it, I really wanted to go again this season, Mm -hmm. um, because like they were saying, even if you come back, you're going to get, it's going to be a little bit different, um, even though you're going to know the Mm storyline, but (sighs) next year, next year, I want to go a bunch of times, um, Delusion, 10 out of 10, Scary Farm, 10 out of 10, Mm -hmm. Um, everything we did was super fun this year, as it always is. As it but always is. Every it's, year, I feel like it just gets a little bit crazier in the sense of there's more so to much do. to do. Like I feel like with the strike this year, I feel like it made it a little bit easier in a sense because there was yeah. a lot of things that I, I personally couldn't do, and mm-hmm. I know you were on board too. You weren't doing, um, so it made it a little easier in that sense. But I mean, these Halloween seasons are turning into. It's not October. It's August through yeah. November. Yeah. Which I love every second of it. Oh, yeah. Um, the Make strike just longer. put a little bit of a wrench in our machine. Um, but that's it, right? Was there anything else that we did? I think that's it. Right? Yeah, I don't I don't think. Um, I did Spooky Empire at the very end of the season, which oh, is yeah. another uh, Halloween convention out in Orlando. So I was back in Orlando. Um, and they were celebrating 20 years, mm. which was awesome. Um, it's one of those, uh, Midsummer Scream is my number one, Spooky Empire is my number two. And I guess they're pretty close to each other, but they're very different experiences. Um, Spooky Empire is like a hotel ballroom situation. It's it's massive still, but okay. it's like that more hometown yeah. kind of vibe. Um, whereas Midsummer is more of like, they have the Hall of Shot. It's just bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so that was... Basically, my end of my Halloween season, we got home the day before Halloween Mm -hmm. and Halloween day. I know people are always like, I like to do nothing on Halloween. I like to stay home on Halloween, which is not doing nothing. It is purposeful. Yeah. Like staying home on Halloween is a tradition. We hand out candy. We decorate. We put the 12 foot skeleton up. (laughs) Um, We like go around the neighborhood with the neighborhood kids Mm -hmm. and like watch them trick or treat. And it's just like it's that home kind of warm and fuzzy Halloween feeling yeah. and I would have it no other way. Although it's fun to do stuff on Halloween, but it's like, yeah, we usually go out and do a bunch of stuff. Our Halloween was kind of really cut short this year. Cause we did a movie. We went to Alamo draft house in LA and we saw Halloween, Ooh, fun. which is always good. Yeah. Then we went on a ghost walk 
in oh, uh, Chinatown. Okay. Which was great until halfway through, we look across the street and there's just a dog wandering the streets by itself. And of course, it's Matt and I, and we can't just You're let not it leave that dog. We can't leave it there. I didn't and hear the story. It, I, know, I don't think I told you the story. But basically, the dog was walking by itself. And of course, Matt and I are like, well, we have to we do ha- something yeah. about this. So we, we uh, have another dog. We broke away from the group and we oh, tried. Oh, go- the ghost tour? We were like, literally Peace. in the middle of the ghost tour. And they, the group went off to the next location. And Matt and I are like, we can't leave the dog. We can't. Because like, yeah. he was literally walking through Aww. traffic. And um, like another a big dog? Yeah, he was like a, like kind of like a golden lab kind of size. He was bigger. And we're just like, what do we do? So I'm. Basically, it ended with me calling a bunch of places, trying to figure out what to do. Like on Um, Halloween night. Yeah, Yeah. Halloween night, which is already busy. And another lady was helping us. Unfortunately, he ran off into the night and we couldn't do anything about it. Hopefully, he went back home. Hopefully. That's what I'm going to think. In my head, he went back home. Um, So after that, I was kind of not feeling like doing anything. So we went home. Um, So yeah, but you know what? It's one Halloween of... However many nights the yeah. following that we yeah. did this year, so and you potentially scurry that little puppy back to his house, where he's warm. <sighs> yeah, and he's cuddly, loving life right now, and he was eating yes. candy because that's what you do. Um, but not hot Cheetos. But apparently. not hot Cheetos. AJ was trying to feed the kitten hot Cheetos, and he was all about he it. He was loving it. He was coming back for thirds, and Cam was but yelling you, at but me. But you get to go home, and then I have to deal with the cat pooping the everywhere. Hot poops. Yeah, hot the poops. hot poops. I feel like yeah. I mean, they're not the help. They're, they're not yeah, the healthiest snack whatever. and probably not good for kittens. Um, okay, so we're going to shift gears to um, a little movie and show catch up. Yeah, we're going to ramble on about movies and shows. And um, where should we start? That's I, the thing. I'm like, oh, there's so many. I, on my list, I have Insidious, The Red Door, which I was really excited for because I I'm a fan of the franchise. Mm-hmm. I love the Insidious movies. Um, some of them, obviously, the beginning ones were way better than the later ones. But yeah. I was really excited for for this one. And it was um, Patrick Wilson's di- directorial debut. Yeah, almost, that almost came out wrong. Directorial debut. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had high hopes for it. And I didn't hate it. Um, I didn't love it. To me, it was just very predictable. Like oh, everything yeah. that was going to happen, yeah. I knew it was going to happen. And mm-hmm. I felt like the story was the story we've seen before. Yeah. They were just all older and he was divorced. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's the issue. Like I love Insidious. I love this whole world that they're building, but I feel like it's since they still focus on that one, like, you know, on Patrick and his family. Yeah. It's the same the thing same, over it's and the, over again. They, they're battling the same demon. They yeah. go into the further. It's the same thing. Like, even the scenes were this very similar because mm-hmm. they're going, that demon is still in the same, like, cool yeah. cathedral, whatever that thing he was in that's really cool looking. He's listening to t- uh, Tiny Tim yeah. <laughs> over like, on repeat. And there was some good nostalgia parts of it because it made you remember the old stuff. But again, it was just, like, the same story. Fast, not fast forwarded, but, like, in a different time. Like, yeah. A decade later. Yeah. My favorite older. part, he was yelling at, at his dad and he said, and then this Patrick, what's his name? Patrick Wilson, right? Yeah. For some reason, I kept calling him a different name, but I don't remember what it is. But dad. anyways, <laughs> daddy. Dad. Um, he was like, you're such a little shit. And I remember, re- I went over to him and I'm like, I can't wait to enter my little shit era. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, the son was a little shit. And that he made was. Me mad. I was like, you're being a little shit. Yeah. Dude. You're going to college. Your parents are paying for college. You know how expensive that is? Yeah. You know how much money that costs? Mm -hmm. Be grateful. Mm -hmm. Be grateful. Um, But those are like those real life things where you're like, ugh, you're such a brat. And I know we talked about this before, but that kind of like being a little shit is good because it makes you... It makes you dislike a kid. Like, they're doing a good job. Yeah. It makes yeah. you dislike them. And then whatever happens to them, whether it's good or bad, either you're, like, here for it or you're upset for them. Yeah. So, I mean, that little it shit. <laughs> Comments yeah, it wasn't are my that favorite. movie was a shirt. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't my fave. I had higher hopes for it. I was a little disappointed. I'll say that. Um, what you got? Um, did you see they cloned Tyrone? No. No. Oh, it was very good. Um, it stars John Boyega. Oh, I like him. Um, scary. It's it's or like, like a, it's more of a science fictiony okay. kind of thing, basically. Um, Hence, cloning. Yeah, sci-fi. Basically, 
I forgot which name where it's technically supposed to be uh, set, but basically like this neighborhood that's a little bit more, you know, on the there's you know drug dealers, it's a little dumpy of a, a little, neighborhood, like you know it's yeah. a little more dangerous. Yeah, um, but he all of a sudden realizes that he comes upon like a clone of himself. Ooh. And it's just like, what the heck is going on? And you uncover that this is like a thing. I don't want to give too much away because it is new, oh, newer. Okay. Um, Jamie Foxx is also in it. And it is, I is thought it, it was really or in fun. Theaters? Um, or you saw it in theaters? I saw it in theaters, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those situations where it was going to a streaming service. Like pretty quickly. But it, um, but because we live oh. in LA, we uh-huh. get, like, you get, you know, it's available it's, in theaters. They showed in limited theaters. They cloned Tyrone? They cloned Tyrone. Tyrone. Sounds fun. I like science fiction. Yeah. It doesn't it always really have cool. to be blood and guts, although we do prefer that, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Um, we were talking about this one the other night at dinner, Cobweb, which I actually really like. Yeah. You were having a hard time remembering. It was so funny because you're like Cobweb and Matt was like, yeah, oh, yeah we, we saw, saw that. that. And I'm like, like, no. No, we didn't. And I don't he remember. He's like, no, we did. And I'm like, no, we didn't. And I looked it up on my letterbox and I'm like, oh, I logged it. So yeah, I did see it. So um, this has Lizzie, Lizzie Kaplan in it and she's great. Yes. Um, so it's an eight-year-old boy who tries to investigate the mysterious knocking sounds um, coming from inside the walls of his house, unveiling a dark secret that his sinister parents have kept hidden from him. And at first you're like, is this kid nuts? Yeah. You're, is he dreaming? It goes through it where you're like, one moment you're like, Okay, is maybe the kid kind of something's going mm-hmm. on? Yeah, or or is he have an over over imagine overactive I imagination, know overactive imagination? Um, uh, or then it like it. I feel I remember like you were kind of on a roller coaster where it's like maybe it's this thing. Oh no, maybe oh, it's, it's this like thing. those parents oh my God, are now fucking the, weird. No, the parents are just yeah. I was like something's yeah. wrong with them. Like yeah, this yeah. kid's messed up because they're weird. Um, but it was a little bit of a, a roller coaster where. It was it, one other thing that I really liked. It was filmed very beautifully. It was like mm-hmm. dark and gritty and grimy. And the house was like kind of grimy, but kind of cool. Like that the old... wallpaper. And they had that one really cool window. Yeah. Because that's what sparked it. Once I finally looked it up, it had that image of him with his head up against yep. the, his ear against the wall because he's listening for something. And it has that really cool window behind him and like the really nice wallpaper. And it was like the house was very. Like an old kind of haunted looking house, but it wasn't supposed to be haunted. Mm-hmm. And you weren't sure. You're like, is is it actually haunted or is this kid crazy? Yeah. Um, like what's going on? And I feel like I won't give it away because like, if I tell you, it's kind of like pointless to watch it. Um, I know we always say you're going to get spoilers if you're listening, but um, the turns are cool. There were mm-hmm. some parts for the end where I was like, oh, let's wrap it up. Or they like where they show a yeah. little bit too much um, of like the thing that actually ends up being the thing. Um <laughs> being v- very the thing vague that becomes the, the thing, thing, the thing of the thing and the reason the thing. that you watch the movie the thing but it was good and this is um streaming on hulu i don't know if it's anywhere else but we saw it on hulu so you can watch it at any moment um what else you got toxic avenger oh, i didn't see toxic avenger have you seen any of the toxic avenger well yeah, yeah. i've seen the latest yeah so they it's like oh he said so it creepy. is a remake yeah i guess uh but it's very good. It has uh, Peter Dinklage as Toxie, um, Elijah Woods in it, and he doesn't look like himself at he all. He looks yucky. I think it is well known how much I love Elijah mm-hmm. Wood because I feel like I bring Do you love him, up. him in this character? Would you love him in any form? In any form. Really? That's true love. She's Did fanning herself. Awesome hairdo in this one. Oh, man. It's his like a- hair, it's like... He, it's it, it's what's his name from Rocky Rocky Horror Picture where like it has the hair the long hair at the bottom and then it's bald and then he it's has like a little grease. bit in the front so he's kind of like flock of seagulls kind of yeah, style but like with Crisco like he puts Crisco in it <laughs> yeah in the he's very greasy mm. penguin hairdo yeah, yeah he's he's gross. very penguiny ish in this but in this if you're listening she says she loves you even in this form that's <sighs> I know that's saying a lot uh, Kevin Bacon's <laughs> also in it and he's like Kevin Bacon. really good in it it's so good um. So yeah, I would watch it. I also, when I went to go see it, so I saw it at Beyond Fest Beyond or Fest? Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Beyond Fest. Um, and this was during the strike. So they did a Q&A with the director. Um, but normally at one of these things, they probably would have brought cast out. But before going, I was like, oh man, what if Elijah Wood is there? And Matt's like, 
Matt and my mom were like, he's not going to be there. Yeah. The strike is going on. He's not going to be like, but he is also like a really big fan of horror movies and he's in this. So he, he might, might just go, go as a fan. Yeah. I'm like, he might. So I just, just in case I like to get my, v, you know, I like to get my VHS signed by She's people. She's such a nerd. I'm mm-hmm. such a nerd. I like getting people to sign my, the, my VHS collection. So I brought my personal copy of the faculty the one that like got me into horror um and also into short kings like elijah wood <laughs> short <kings. laughs> um so this movie the faculty completely changed the directory the trajectory of my life i i blame everything on that movie but i'm like i'm just gonna bring it just in case and sure enough we were sitting there and somebody who was sitting next to us came in and they were like oh elijah wood's out there and i went are you kidding me <gasps> and then um gasp gasp so then i'm matt's like go get him to sign it and i said i don't know i'm too nervous and of course this is a situation where matt has to stay in the seat because he's holding our seats because if we move like our good seats will be gone so i'm like fine okay i'm gonna try this so i get up and i go out to the lobby area this is at the arrow theater um and which is very small which is very small yeah. And he's in line for the bathroom and he's talking to someone. So I'm like, I'm not going to be that person that goes up to him while he's waiting in line to go to the bathroom and he's in deep conversation, that awkwardness. So I'm like standing there pretending to be on my phone. And then he goes up, uses the bathroom, comes back down. I'm like, okay, this is my fucking moment. So he walks into the theater and I'm walking behind him. And then he's the lady who's bringing him in there is bringing him to his reserved seats. And it's like, okay, over here. And I go, excuse me. And he's like, he turns, he's so nice. And he was like, oh, hi. And I'm like, hi. I'm like, I just, oh my goodness. I don't know if that got (laughs) on camera. I probably didn't get on camera. I hope it did. The Um, cat is just launching into the air. Just jumping. Um, But I was like, I just wanted to let you know that the faculty is like, got me into horror. And I'm like, I just wanted to say, I, I just really loved it. And he's like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, you can totally say no, but would would you could you sign my VHS? And he's like, oh yeah, let's for sure. He's like, fuck yeah, let's Aww. do it. And I was like, oh my god. So as as so I hand it to him with the pet, and of course my brain is just on one track, and I just had to once again reiterate that this is my fa- this is the movie that got me into horror. And I'm like, AJ, just shut up. He, he just, signed it. He, he was extremely nice. That's when you say thank you. Yeah, and you walk I should away. just say thank you. But my head, I think the record skipped yeah. and was just. It just played again. The same thing. And he was probably looking at you like he's like, oh my god, this. That, though. Okay, thank you, okay, ma'am. Thank guys, and he right. signed it for me, and I went back to my seat, and I was visibly shaking, and it was the greatest moment of my life because he was nice and what he, a sweetheart. So yeah, it was great. Toxic Avenger, watch Toxic it. Toxic Avenger, watch also, it. Elijah it's Wood good. Is cool. Also, Elijah Wood is cool. Um, next on my list, I have the Nun too. Did you mm-hmm. see the Nun too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, she has opinions. Okay, so. I really liked it. I I liked the first Nun movie. I did like this one better. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of went into it just being like, oh, whatever. You know, at a certain point, we've seen so many horror movies. I just, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, it'll be fine. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was done really well. The story of um, like possession and um, exorcism and all of that has been done so many times before. Yeah. Um, so for me, a lot of those, I just kind of watch them and I'm like, whatever, we're going to get what we get, you know? Um But there was one scene in the movie that I loved uh, where she's in like the streets and in front of the newsstand. That's that scene. It was filmed. Yeah. So cool. And if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what's going to happen. You know exactly what's going to happen as the pages are turning. So she's standing in front of like a newsstand wall with all of the magazines and papers and the wind is blowing and everything's the pages are kind of flipping Mm -hmm. and they're revealing different images and you see like something is starting to be created in front of you and you again you know where it's going to go but it it lasts kind of long but it works Mm -hmm. you know and then finally this this beautiful image composed of all of these images from these papers and magazines reveals the picture of the nun and it's just it's just cool. It was shot really well. It was very dark and kind of gritty. Um, it's in Paris in the in the fifties, I think, in like the late fifties. I forget the time. time where they old timey time. Yeah, this cat is like Wild. the sat is gonna the, the sat the set is gonna be torn down. He's like ripping a napkin and flying in the air like a <laughs> crazy maniac terror. But um, it's so cute. <laughs> I think my thing is because. Before we went to go see Nun 2, we rewatched The Nun. Uh-huh. I just feel like there's a lot of talking and not much happens. And then, in the first one? In the first one. Yeah. And then Nun 2, I was just kind of like, eh. 
But I th- the scene, I the only thing that I wish with the scene with the magazines flipping, I wish they didn't put it so much in the promos. Because if I would have seen see it the for promos. the first time in the theaters, I would have been like, what? I didn't but see the since promos. I'd seen it so many times yeah, by that point, knew. I was like, oh, I already know what's going to yeah. happen. I guess that would have probably changed it for me if I saw yeah. it. I hadn't seen the full like trailer with that part in it. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like I do like to watch trailers, but a lot of times I like to not. I normally don't. I don't the problem is, is that know. I go to the, I like to go see uh, you movies see in, in theaters, the theaters. So you can't avoid it. So I can't avoid them yeah. like at all. Um, so, cause at a certain point, especially like as you get closer to the movies, because they're playing the same ones they over play and the over same again, ones over too, and over yeah. again. And as you get closer to the release of the film, they're putting more and more in the trailers that's giving too much away. And right. normally I would be like, I don't want to see that, but yeah, like I said, I go to the movies way too often. So to I, avoid I it. see them. Yeah, I just, unless you came no in right as the movie started. And, and I think if you can avoid it, it makes the experiences a little bit Mm-hmm. better but some people like to know what yeah they some people want to know it's that's everyone, how they decide if they're going to see the movie or not yeah don't you dare oh my god you stay down there he saw like a fly or something um okay so that was the nun too yeah what you next next you next yeah renfield oh i loved renfield i loved renfield so much i, I saw it like it. four times or like what well, i think so two times good. in theaters and it's so good it's so good nicholas cage Dra- the Dracula, Top of his game as the, Dracula. The Dracula we so all didn't perfect. know we needed. Yeah, he's so good, so good. Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Holt, another person I absolutely love. Um, but he's not. He's not short. He's not short. Aww. But breaking the rules. It's a great movie. It's great. I loved it. If so you much. haven't seen, it's funny. It's it's gory. Mm-hmm. It's it's like everything you want in <laughs> in what you would imagine a Dracula movie with Nicholas Cage yeah. would be. I and it's it's so fun. They do um, one thing that I absolutely loved. They took footage from oh, it's like so cool. yeah. the the Bella uh, Dracula, and they superimpose Nicolas Cage and Nicholas Holt's faces on their character, like you know the characters that they're playing from that story, and it's just so good. It's, it's- was done super well. I honestly, again, I knew that one. I knew a little bit more. Had, I hadn't seen the full trailer, but I'd seen like little tidbits, so I knew yeah. like the um, the vibe of the movie. Mm-hmm. But once we watched it, I, it was so much more than I ever expected. Yeah, I loved it. So good. If you have not seen it. Um, Aquafina's amazing in it. Bren Schwartz is in it. I love him, obviously oh, she, from yeah, Parks Aquafina's and Rec. Great. All right, so next, um, I recently saw this one, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, mm-hmm. which. Didn't get very good reviews on the internet. I, I didn't see this until after I watched it. I was like, wow, everybody hated that movie. I did not. I actually really liked it. Um, the last Pet Cemetery, I thought, the remake, I thought was mm-hmm. good. This one, I thought was good. Um, it's got Henry Thomas in it. It's got David Duchovny in it. So yeah. maybe I'm just, I really love both of them. So yeah. maybe I'm like, I'm going to put aside anything else. But I thought the story was good. Um, it was it was It was fine. fine. Yeah. I actually, it's really funny. I didn't know Henry Thomas was in it. Really? And then, no. Oh, wait, until you saw it. Yeah. Until I saw it. And then he was sitting on the, he was, the the, the first time you see him, he's sitting, sitting on the, on porch, the porch with yeah. the hat on. Yeah. I thought he was, oh, who's that guy from Better Call Saul? The main, the actor's, main actor? The I forget, actor's um, name. I forget his name. But I love him. But he's. But I thought it was him. So I said, oh, it's that guy. And uh-huh. Matt was like. That's Henry Thomas. And I'm like, no, Elliot. it's not. And then the next scene, it was him. And I'm like, oh, no, that is You're like, I Thomas. was completely wrong. I was wrong. I mean, I it was um, based in 1969. And I don't know. I just, I dug it. I, I felt like it was one of the times where it's the same kind of story. Like, we know the story. We know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But it was just a different play on it. And I enjoyed it. So I don't agree with everyone on the internet. That was like, it sucked because I liked it. That's, that's. Fair enough, That's right? That's good, yeah. Um, Exorcist Believer. This was one that I was really hyped for. Um, also, really funny when we went to Horror Nights mm-hmm. in uh, Hollywood. Oh, yeah. The two girls were there because um, they also did the the mazes and stuff. And, and we they got were so to, They were sweet. so nice. So sweet. Uh, we said hi to them. They took a photo with us. They were ex- they were so nice and they were so hyped. Um, they were just really excited. They were so they were excited. Super grateful and so cute. And I was like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Are they going to be able to pull off this whole possession business? But they, I thought they I were thought fantastic. I thought they rocked it. Like while I didn't, 
the movie itself I was a little bit let down by, uh, but them, they I thought they were so great. They were so evil. I love them. Um, I, would, I was telling you, I went to New York for New York Comic Con, and on one of the street corners, it was nothing but huge um, Exorcist Believer uh, billboards and then a thing playing like the in video Times Square, and right? like right next to Times cool. Square and I it was so cool and every time I walked by I'm like they're so amazing they look so good and I love them so much and I'm like I want to I want to do that I'm like I just want to look like them so. I I actually really liked it and Exorcist is my first and one of my favorite horror movies um, so I went into it a little bit skeptical because mm. you know sometimes you're like just leave it alone yeah. Like there's certain things, just leave it alone. We don't need to do it again. Um, so I kind of had that mentality. Uh, we did the the maze in Orlando mm-hmm. and in Hollywood and they were super fun. I was really hyped on it. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> there was some spoilers in it, but there I guess, was some spoilers in it that I you, after watching the movie, I was like, mm, I kind of wish I didn't see that. But. Yeah. But it, 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 it was fine. Yeah. Uh, the mazes were great. The movie, my only my only thing after like thinking about it a little bit more, I was like, my biggest pet peeve was that prince or the prince, that priest. Yeah. I I, I was wish like, there was a little bit more character development for especially for like the priest character because Well, he sucked. I was like, homie, this sucked. is your job. He you're was supposed like, to be- I'm leaving, I'm out of here. And you're like, Whoa, 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 dude, you should you need to help out with this. But And then he comes in, it's amateur hour and he's like and, then, yeah. and he's dead. And the, I was like, the fact Come that on. He comes in and dies right away. Like they didn't develop him enough to where him coming in and then dying right away means anything. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's just the guy who didn't want to do it anyways. Right. So I think that was, that was the only thing for me. I wish that was, was a little bit more. I was like, this is your job character development on them to where when things happen to these characters, I cared more. Yeah. The exorcist, the original one is so good on going into the, these like, you know, getting you to know these characters to where when, shit's going down in that room later that it really matters it really matters that's my only thing but those man the um, girls were great the story was great um there's leslie odom jr was also really fantastic but olivia and lydia you two girls you rocked it you were amazing and then obvious i mean this isn't i guess really a spoiler because i feel like everyone kind of knew who you were going to get a cameo from or is it a spoiler can i say it i feel like i could say it it's been out for a while i mean the moment that you see Reagan at the end, mm-hmm. I didn't, I guess I, I, like, I knew it was coming, but then when you see her and they, like, have that little moment, I was like, oh, like, I got, like, the warm and fuzzies, and you just don't expect that to happen mm-hmm. in that kind of movie. So um, I was pleasantly surprised, to be 100% honest with it. Um, I really enjoyed it. Would recommend. Um, what else do I have? Um, five Nights at oh, Freddy's. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's? Yeah. I feel like this got a lot of hype. And I understand the hype because it was it was a game uh, for the children, and the children loved <laughs> for it. For the children, <laughs> and they had the whole VR thing. And apparently, I guess if you played it on VR and you were a teenager or a child, it was very scary. Mm. Um, I never did any of those things. No. I don't see that it would be very scary to me. Uh, watched it. I thought the story was fine. The characters were cool, um, but I had no emotional attachment to Five Nights at Freddy's in general. So for mm-hmm. me, it was just like a good movie. Yeah. The main actor in it, um, forget his name. Josh his, Hutcherson. I thought he was fantastic. He was the, great. The little in sister it. was great. The sister was great. The cop. Um, Matthew your, your Lillard. favorite. I was waiting. <laughs> he was great. But I have Loved to say, him. called it the second. I was like, that guy, he's whatever's, whatever's supposed to be wrong with this movie. It's, it's him. It's him. It's him. Obviously him. Um, I, I was telling you, because the movie's, uh, it's PG-13, I'm pretty sure. But one thing that I thought was so funny, because right as he's, it's about to reveal that Matthew Lillard is the big bad. He does the the ghost face like knife wipe, but because the movie's PG thirteen, there's nothing on the blade of the knife. So when he went and did this, it's I was clean. like, a that's Matthew Lillard because they're doing the callback to Ghostface. But two, like, couldn't you put something on it? Because like, it's not like Ghostface just does that to do it. You could have like picked it up <laughs> like, out of a puts, pile of ketchup. Yeah, so maybe we know it it's has like blood. grease on it or yeah. something on it. But I did think that was kind of funny. Oh, that's right. Because there can't be bl- PG-13. There can't be blood I don't blood think there can be all? like a ton of blood. Oh. Right? I don't know. I feel like the animatronics are murdering people. I feel like. But they also they did it all off camera. Oh, there was it's no all that's true. It's behind doors. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And I get it. It kind of like makes you use your imagination and you kind of fill in the blanks yourself. Yeah. I think it could have been a tiny bit shorter. I think there could have been one less night at Freddy's, uh, but. 
like four, um, maybe three and a half. Yeah, but I thought it was really fun and for something because I f- I feel like the video game is just you looking at the screens right the entire time. Yeah, I don't understand why it's um, scary. But again, it again, for building off of something like that, I feel like it was yeah. it was fun. I mean, well it was done. basically like our our age Chuck E. Cheese, like what we imagine. Because yeah. as children going to Chuck E. Cheese, immediately you're like, oh, these animatronics kill people at nighttime. Like that's just they're that's scary. Just I don't know why this is at a kid's birthday party. It makes no sense to me. Uh, these things are terrifying. So I just related it to Chuck E. Cheese, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I get it. I get the appeal of it. But it was, I mean, it was fine. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't fantastic. I liked it. it was fine. Um, and now to the thing I've been waiting to talk about since last Tuesday or this that has no context because you don't know what day it is when we put this out, but I know, <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving movie, uh, directed by Eli Roth. So fucking good. It was so fun. It was so the good. Kills, I, I felt bad for anyone who was sitting near us because basically every kill I was scream laughing Yeah, because I was just like, Oh my God. So good. So we saw it at the Vista Theater, mm-hmm. uh, which newly was newly opened, n- re- very beautiful, newly, uh, renovated. Love it. Beautiful. Um, and one thing that was hilarious, oh, I know this was like brutal murders were happening, but we were like laughing, cheering when things would happen. There was oh things, ju- some of the jump scares definitely got me, um, but you could feel like, I know it's newly renovated, but it's still like an old vibe. The seats mm-hmm. aren't like you know, like the loungy, nice seats. So when yeah, you're not would, reclining, you're not putting your feet up. Yeah. People would you're jump in history. Our whole row would shake. Like you would feel, you could feel the tension brewing. And then when something would happen, people would jump and you'd feel all the seats shake. Um, what I have to say is Eli Roth delivers kills mm-hmm. in a very uh, satisfying way. Yeah. It's kind of the way that you're like a little like it's like cringy because you're like, oh, that feels so uncomfortable that this is going to happen. But I see it happening. But then he'll do something that is like a little twist to just give you that extra like the know? lady's hair that's caught my in favorite. the shopping cart wheel. That I was could my favorite. feel that. Yeah. I felt that. And it hurt. Yeah. And it's like ju- it's such a simple thing this one um for, was i'm pretty sure this one is was in the trailer and again spoilers if you haven't seen it thanksgiving will already be passed you had sh- you should have done your you better re- have seen it yes there will be no leftovers you better have seen it the um the uh oh my god the diner lady where her her face gets dumped in the water and then, and then immediately on the door of the freezer, the freezer so her face is stuck to it and she's trying to peel it off and you just see the skin stretch coming. like gooey and stretching and yeah it's so good it's but you can feel it i mean i just go back to cabin fever yeah where now i can't shave my legs mm-hmm. anymore thank you Eli skin, Roth. you're just gonna i can't just gonna come shave off. my legs without Feeling that scene. This is why now, she always has tights on. Yeah, I always have tights because it is hairy <laughs> on my legs. Thank you, Eli. Um, but yeah, there's just certain things where you're just like, Ugh, so good. And this is another prime example of, so it's a bunch of teenagers are in mm-hmm. high school. Um, it's a prime example of what we were saying earlier about the kids being like just the right amount of annoying. Like mm-hmm. they're doing such a good job that you're either like, oh, I hope they die or you're rooting for them. So when something happens to them, like you're emotionally attached again, mm-hmm. like you're saying with the exorcist, yeah. it's building up those characters where um, you're either on their side or you're against them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just <laughs> uh, Cameron's notes is you mostly wanted them to get killed. But I feel like in a good horror movie where there's kids like teenagers, you usually mostly want them to get killed. You're like, wow, you're annoying. You're yeah. a brat. I hope you die in a very epic way um, and quickly so I don't have to listen to you anymore. And but that's hopefully good acting. on a trampoline. <laughs> hopefully on a trampoline. So um, a little bit of history about Thanksgiving movie. So this kind of came from a trailer that mm. came out in, I believe it was 2007, um, when Grindhouse came out. So it yeah, was there was, was a, a series of trailer. fake trailers that yeah. happened. Thanksgiving was one of them. Um, so if you saw the trailer, you knew exactly what you were signing up for. Mm. And the, the film was very much, there were certain little subtle differences. There were certain things in that Grindhouse trailer that I was hoping <laughs> happened in the movie that were a little bit different. Um, but it was fun. Mm-hmm. It was brutal. Um, and we don't have a Thanksgiving movie. We have a bunch of Christmas slasher movies. Yeah. We have a bunch of Halloween There are some movies. Thanksgiving ones. But like they're a little bit lower tier. But not like good but, ones. Yeah. But this not is like now a, higher tier good this is uh, Thanksgiving the, movie. The Thanksgiving movie. And yeah. I would highly recommend um, 
seeing this on Thanksgiving would be kind of fun, but mm-hmm. I know it's like family time on or around Thanksgiving. It's yeah. already out, so you can see it pre-Thanksgiving or after or multiple times because I'm mm-hmm. ready to see it again. Yeah. Um, one of my top horror flicks for the year, I would say. Mm-hmm. So we're ending off the year pretty well. They also, um, do we have any other ones? I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. They also, as part of their uh, PR um, media to uh, promote the movie, sent me a very fun special treat. You might have already seen it. AJ hasn't seen it in the in flesh. Person. Three, two, one. Reveal. Wow. They sent me a ice cream tur. Oh, sorry. They sent me an ice cream turkey from Baskin Robbins. Um, as you can kind of tell, if you At saw my from video, one side. from one side, he's a little demolished, but that's because I had to investigate when I first got it. Um, Got to make sure there's not a real turkey in there. Well, I opened the front door and there was like a cooler at the front door and it said Thanksgiving on it, like a Coleman cooler, but it was big. Um, And then I opened it up and there was a Baskin Robbins cake or Baskin Robbins like box. Um, And we got a little turkey. But if you see, he's got the little laces on his butt. I don't know, right? Do they lace up the butt? I don't know, really know. It's cute, but I'm not you really got sure. You got tie up your turkey, make sure nothing falls out that butt. And then what's the front things on the... What are those? I don't know. But it's the really arms? cute. And um, so I, I'm, Dairy and me don't very agree with each other very oh, that's well. That's depressing. It kind of sucks, but I cut into the turkey and I was like, I'm going to try it, right? And it's so fucking good. I had to stop myself. Okay, I'm going to... Can I put I this down like this? I saw a video. And it, I think this is... a. Uh, a oh there's a cone right here it's a cone you have to cut it though because it's all um so this is where we we cut in before but yeah you can see the ice cream right here try it oh why does no i want this one okay why does that one look so real it looks like a turkey leg because also when i was shooting the video i took it out of the box and it came with dry ice to keep it cold but then i it took a long time you know it takes a long time to shoot video so it started (laughs) melting so he looks very like fleshy and then, um, what flavor is it? I think it's I think it's Neapolitan because yeah. there's strawberry in the back. All right, let me take a picture when you guys take a bite those legs. Mm. 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 Yeah, it's strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. I'm not sure if it's like, but Unlike it's caramel, caramel, uh, caramel coated. We also have our lively ghost spoons if you'd like to get in there without making a complete mess. Was really good. This is um, really good. I'm not sure. Doesn't an ice cream cake usually have cake in it <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> Baskin and Robbins doesn't. Oh, no. I don't. Ben see. and Jerry's cakes. Oh, you're losing. Oh, maybe there's cake. I don't. I mean, I don't care if there's cake or not. Their cake is just oh my ice mom. cream, too, and it's so good. Baskin Robbins, you nailed it. This is so good. I would highly recommend getting a, uh, if you are a meat eater, get a real this turkey. But also get this, like get a, instead of a pie, do a uh, gobble gobble Thanksgiving ice cream turkey. Cause it's so good. Like the outside. It's so cold. It's really cold. That's why I'm using this spoon. Um, and you can actually, you can't order this, right? You saw an ad yeah. for it. So you can actually get this. Just make, thing is my, my friend Jen, she got one for her cause her son's birthday is on Thanksgiving. So she got him one of these for his birthday. Oh, but they forgot to put the glaze, the caramel on it. So it just looked like a white raw turkey. And she's like, it's not good. Happy so birthday. make sure they do it correctly. No, it's so delicious. I mean, you can't go wrong with ice cream and caramel. Um, and maybe or maybe not cake. We're not sure. We haven't gotten all the way to the the meaty insides. But um, that's it. A huge thank you to Thanksgiving Movie and to Sony Pictures and to Baskin Robbins for this delicious treat. Cheers. There will be no leftovers. There will absolutely be no leftovers. And make sure to follow us on socials and you can watch and listen to all of our episodes at... Oh! Jump stick down. Let's get spooky.com. And don't forget to... Stay spooky! We made a giant...